Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another 2024 election prediction. This time we're going to be looking at the 2024 House races for the month of June 2024. So I think we'll start off with Colorado because they have a lot of interesting races going on here. So early polling actually shows Lauren Boebert already underperforming in Colorado's fourth. Like, there's a lot of undecideds in that poll to keep in mind, though. Sometimes she's barely leading, and sometimes she's actually losing here. It's very unpredictable in Colorado's 4th district, but for now, it might put it even likely Republican, but we have to look at the margins here. Trump won this district by 18 percentage points. So, just looking at that, and we don't even know if Boebert will be the nominee here, but I think she will be. But I think for now, this is a race to keep an eye on in the future. I'll have to wait for more polls, because that one poll that shows the Dem leading, it shows about 41%. And there's like a million undecideds. But this is a race to keep an eye on, but for now I'm going to be keeping it a safe Republican. But I just wanted to mention it could get down to likely R. The 5th District, it certainly could get to likely R. It's in pretty much an open race. Trump only won this by 10, and Colorado shifting blue. So I'd have this as a likely Republican district for now. The 8th District would probably be about lane blue. It would be a competitive race, at least. It was close back in 2022. And Colorado's third, this will be a... Let me just get the tilt rating on here. This will be a very, very close race. But for now, since it, Bobert isn't running here, if she was, she would have lost. But we have a different Republican candidate running here who's a little bit better than her, but not really that good of a candidate. It'll be a close race, but still a likely Republican district will probably shift a bit blue in 2024. But I still have this as a tilt Republican hold. Let's go on to California. These few races here. Let's try to get... Nope, I want to go to Los Angeles here. All right, so we got two competitive, or three competitive. I'm keeping the Michelle Steele rating the same. I think she'll hold on here. I think with uh, Dave Min, he has a DUI on his record, so that isn't good for the Democrats to have someone like that. And this is a Biden double-digit district, so that's one good thing going for the Democrats here. I think this will be a close-ish race. It is an open race, and the Democratic candidate isn't the best, but I still think he'll probably manage to hold on here. I don't think it's disqualifying for a candidate to have that on the record. It isn't like George Santos, but it'll be a bit close. In the 41st district, this is a trending Democratic district, and Ken Calvert, he barely won last time by a one percentage point, and that's when Dems really wrote off this race. So Will Rowlands, without a lot of fundraising money, he was able to make that race that close, and this time it's a top target for the DNC here. So they're going to invest a lot of money into this race, and I think they're actually going to flip this congressional seat in their favor. So Mike Garcia, let's just go to a full map of California here, because these districts are pretty big. So with Mike Garcia, he's always managed to win in a clutch margin before, and uh, this time he's running against someone who's actually pretty decent. He's already led Garcia in a couple polls here, but uh, I think Garcia's still going to manage to narrowly win here, but this will be a very competitive race, but I still think it's slightly in his favor. So the 13th district with John Duterte. Barely won last time with extremely low turnout. I think this seat will be very likely to flip. David Valadeo, on the other hand, I think he'll have a better chance because he was able to win in close elections before. So I put this as about tilt blue as well. He has a better chance than Duterte does. So I'll put that as a tilt blue rating. We're going to head to New York next because they got a lot of competitive races. Okay, so I agree on all these ratings here. New York's first is likely are because there is a good Democratic candidate running in this district, and uh, he'll probably probably lose by a likely Republican margin. Still, it's still just a narrow Trump district, though. In uh, New York's fourth, with Trump doing so well in the polling in New York, it'll probably have a down ballot effect. Currently, I think Biden will probably end up winning New York by instead of twenty one points. Only a 13% margin in 2024. I think we're going to see that big of a drag down. Because uh, a recent Emerson poll with undecided pushed showed Biden only leading here 55 to 45 overall in New York. 
I don't think it'll be that margin. I think Biden will probably gain a bit more points there, probably a 13% win, like I've been saying. But that would be enough to shift New York 4 from likely blue to lean blue. Again, there is an incumbent Republican running in this district, and if Trump does well in Nassau County, it could make New York's fourth a very competitive race. And with Laura Gillen, she ran in 2022 and lost to Diaz Fazito, so she's a former loser in this district. But I think this time she'll probably be able to unseat him. She did have a big track record of losing. The last two elections she ran and she did lose in Nassau County. But I think third time's the charm for her here. It's a D plus 14 and a half district. So it's a very Democratic one. It'll be a bit more competitive than I was expecting before. But I think Laura Gillen will probably pull off the win against Anthony D'Esposito in this race. With the 18th district and Pat Ryan... Again, upstate New York, it didn't really trend that Republican in the 2022 governor's race. And with Pat Ryan having an incumbency advantage and it being a likely Biden district, I think he'll end up winning here by a likely blue margin. With Brandon Williams, I think he's pretty much doomed here. It's a double-digit Biden seat. I think he's very likely to end up losing here. These other two races, however, will be a lot more competitive Molinaro, I think he'll luck out here to another close victory. He is running against a Democrat who nearly beat him last time, but I think he'll manage to hold on here. With Lawler, again, it's a double-digit Biden seat. Molinaro, at least, he won two elections. Well, he did close in the special election, and he barely won the last time. But with Lawler, it's a bit closer to New York City. It's not as a close Biden district as a... So it's not as close as the 4.5% margin that Molinaro is in. It's a Biden plus 10 district. It's closer to the city. And uh, again, it's going to be a bit harder for him to win here than Molinaro here. He is running against um, Mondaire Jones, I believe, but I think he'll probably end up beating him. I think Lawler's probably going to end up losing narrowly here as long as New York doesn't go likely blue. If New York goes likely blue, then the 17th district will probably go Republican just because of the down ballot effects of Trump making New York a lot closer. But right now, I just think that partisan lean in that district is going to be too much for Lawler to overcome here. But that's a very tough race to call. That's why it's only tilt. Let's go to the full map. So these next few races, I guess we could go to Texas. So I'd probably put it a likely R in Texas 15. Texas 34th would be about likely blue. It's a Biden plus 15 district. And uh, Henry Kuehler, he's in a bit of uh, legal trouble. So I'm probably going to demote this from a likely blue to lean blue district. Alaska with Mary Patola. She's a very popular blue dog Democrat. She's very well liked in Alaska. And ranked choice voting will certainly help her here. Main second with Jared Golden. Ranked choice voting is also in effect in this district, which will probably give Jared Golden a narrow advantage here. I think he'll end up winning here by about two percentage points. In uh, New Hampshire's district, we're going to have an interesting race here because the Republican uh, nominee here will be a decent candidate for the Republicans to run, so I'm putting this as a lean blue candidate. He did well in the New Hampshire legislature elections. Let's head to these southern states. So in Louisiana 6th, it looks like Louisiana has to keep a second black majority district in the state of Louisiana. So it's probably going to be a safe blue one. Alabama, on the other hand, it's only a 13% Biden district. So I'm going to be putting it as a likely blue one for now. Georgia 2nd is trending slightly Republican. So it's not going to be over a 10% victory for the Democrat here. Down in Florida, we'll take a look at a few of these races. The 9th District will probably be about likely blue. Uh, I'll probably put a few of these races. Salazar, she's probably going to win by over 10. Laura Lee, she'll probably win by over 10 as well. well I see these two races being... Well, actually, Corey Mills, I think, will probably also win by over 10 here. So I really only have one likely Republican district in Florida's 13th. Let's see it. Florida's 15th. It was a 17% victory, but it is a narrow Biden dis or narrow Trump district. Maybe I'll put it back down to likely R, but it could very well go to safe. 
let's see here, that one district in Illinois that's decently competitive. I think Republicans will put money into this district. Indiana's first. It's a presidential year. I don't think Republicans would focus that much resources there. Iowa's third. I would keep as Lee and R. Don Bacon, I think he'll narrowly hold on here because polls have Nebraska second going to Biden by like a narrow 3% margin. So that's enough for Don Bacon to manage to hold on here. Matanas first will probably remain lean R. Nevada has three decently competitive congressional districts, but Democrats gerrymandered them pretty effectively. Dina Titus, I think she manages to hold on by a likely blue margin. These other two districts, however, I'd put them about, I'll keep the fourth about likely blue, but the third, it'll be a bit more competitive. The Republican candidate is decent, I would say. So I'd I would put it as a lean blue race, but Republicans have already indicated that they're not going to spend much money on trying to flip those races. Let's just finish up the West Coast here. We're going to head to Oregon. So we got a few likely blue districts here, but uh, I'll put this one to safe blue, and I'll keep this one as likely blue because it's a bit closer than this one. Lori Chavez de Rimmer, she's facing Janelle Bynum, Bynum, who beat her a few times in uh, Oregon, I've read. So... It's already an uphill battle for DeRimmer in this congressional district, and I think it'll probably be a lean blue flip because the Democrats nominated a fairly good candidate who beat her in the past. So let's take a look at Washington State. With the third district, we're having a rematch here with Marie Perez and Joe Kent, but it's only a narrow Trump district, and I think Marie Perez will be able to win over here with bipartisan support. Let's take a look at the complete map. We've got Arizona and New Mexico next. So with Arizona, we got two competitive races. Cisco Maney, it's a very, very narrow Biden district, so I think Cisco Maney will be narrowly able to hold on. And Squire Hart, I think he's still kind of doomed here. It's a Democratic trending district, and I think Democrats will really put a lot of money into trying to flip that race. New Mexico, we got one competitive district here, and Vasquez got himself into a bit of a scandal due to a uh, former police report being uh, coming out, and we're seeing uh, one uh, news site just write about it. So he's got himself in a bit of a scandal here that could hurt him with African-American voters. So I'm going to be demoting this race down to a tilt blue race, and we're having a rematch. I'm pretty sure the former congresswoman here is running against him again, so... She has a chance here. So uh, he's, that's a very competitive race now due to that scandal that came out about Vasquez. Good. And we're all done with the West Coast. Now we could just focus on the East Coast and Middle America. So I think in uh, North Carolina, we have a decently competitive race with Don Davis. I might even put this down to tilt blue, honestly, because of how close this race would be. So it's no longer lean blue, it's tilt blue, I would say. It's only narrow Biden district after all here. So going down to Virginia, this is going to be a safe blue race. It's a very Democratic district. It's really not going to be close. 18 percentage points. Spanberger's district, it's an open seat, and I think Democrats will be slightly favored to win here. Jen Kiggins, I think she manages to hold on here. But this is about lean R. Again, Trump's actually pulling well in Virginia, which is surprising. The one district in New Jersey that's competitive. New Jersey 7th with Tom Keene. I think it'll be a more competitive race, but it is only a narrow Biden district by four percentage points. So I have this as a lean Republican hold for now. I think he'll manage a hold on here in this race. I think he'll win over independent voters too. Let's head to Pennsylvania next. We got a few competitive races here. The tenth district, it's a trending Democratic district, which is why it's lean R, not likely R. And uh yeah, Trump only won here by four. It's probably gonna trend a bit more bluer this time next time around. Cartwright, on the other hand, his district is trending Republican. It'll be a top target for Republicans to flip this seat. For now, I have this as a tilt blue rating. The seventh district. She actually unperformed Cartwright back then, so I'll probably put this as about tilt blue as well. So it really depends on who wins Pennsylvania in 2024. I think that'll determine where these two districts fall. We have Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin up next. We'll start with Ohio. 
So Marcy Captor, she's running for re-election again. She won in a landslide last time around, and I think she'll be in a bit closer race because their Republican opponent isn't a joke like the last one was. But uh, with her incumbency advantage, 21 terms she's aiming for, I think she'll be able to win another term here just with that huge incumbency advantage in this district. Amelia Sykes, on the other hand, it's a narrow Biden district, and with Trump probably doing a bit better in Ohio, it'll be a very close race. So I'll probably put this as a tilt blue race. It's a race to keep your eye on going into 2024. So I'm only putting it as tilt blue. In Michigan, yeah, I agree with these current ratings. Let's take a look at the third district. I would put it about likely blue as well. John James here, he kind of underperformed a bit, so it kind of makes me want to put it as tilt R, but he is an incumbent here. I'd probably put it as tilt R for now. Could potentially flip if Biden does pretty well here. Um, these two districts, however, I think the seventh district will probably end up flipping to the Republicans. It is an open race. It's a narrow Biden district, but I think Republicans will probably be able to narrowly flip it. But the eighth district, I think it'll be narrowly in the Democratic control here. I think Democrats will be able to manage to hold on to a win in this district. With that De Republicans flipping the seven, it kind of makes me want to put the tenth back to Lenar. Again, uh, I don't know if Democrats will really target this race. So I think I'll agree with the consensus rating here and put it as Lenar again. But we'll see. This could be a potential target for Democrats to flip. Let's take a look at Wisconsin. We got two open or two competitive races here. First district, the reason why I put it as toss up is Brian Steele's actually facing a former congressman in this district who served a few decades ago. But uh, he served in the Wisconsin legislature. He's done pretty well in a lot of his races. So I think he'll be able to make this race decently close. So I actually want to put this as a lean R race. It's only a narrow Trump district after all. And with a de good Democratic candidate, they could make this race pretty close in Wisconsin's first. Wisconsin's third, I think it'll also be another close race. It won't go to a likely R margin. I think it'll be about lean Republican for now. So two lean Republican races in the two competitive districts here. And let's just take a look at the whole map. Democrats narrowly retake control of the U.S. House, 220 seats to the Republicans, 215 seats. We got 17 tilt rating his ear. So the House could go to the Republicans. They just got to win a few of these tilt races, and there's been a bit more added since the last prediction. But that's my current view of the House races in 2024. So if you're new to this channel, I'd highly recommend subscribe if you enjoy content like this. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.